but I just want to, I want to give you what God has uh, given me, and I want to thank you guys for being here today, and thank those who are watching by Facebook, website, YouTube, church app, there's no excuse, N none whatsoever, amen, and uh, so anyway, today I want to preach part three, just briefly, I promise you, I'm going to try my best to honor you, but boy, when you feel God, you just feel Him, you know, you just feel Him, and so God just corrected me, He said, why are you apologizing when I show up? You welcome me in, then you say you're going to give me 15, 20 minutes, and you're leaving at 11.55. So I just thank God for today. Amen. Hallelujah. So today's part three, rebirth, rebuild, rebirth, rebuild, rebirth, rebuild. And like I told you guys, whether you like it or not, we're going to have to rebirth and rebuild. It's just the way it is. Church will never be the same. If you want to go back to 1995, you're going to lose. God is doing something new. I don't understand it all. But I believe it all. And so today what I want to do, I, I want to I go, I got a different title, but I want to stick in the vein of rebirth and rebuild. And so are y'all ready for words? I'm ready to preach it if y'all ready. I'm, I'm just really excited about this. So today's sermon is the power of we. The power of we. And I'm going to need you to help me preach today, all right? So I don't want y'all to get down like Debbie Downers and stuff. But anyway, I want you to go ahead and look at your neighbor six feet apart, six feet apart. Six feet apart. And I want you to look at them. I want you to say this. We're better together. And the rest of you say, we're, we're going to do more together. Come on. We're going to do more together. What about this? I got your back. Mm -hmm. I'm standing with you. Listen, I, I, I got a long sentence right here, okay? Some of y'all, y'all good with one or two little words. I got your back. And after that, it's on you, Jack. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, help me finish this, all right? Help me finish this this morning. So we're going to start over till everybody gets this. Everybody's going to get this today, all right? Even on Facebook. We're better together. Come on, talk to me. We can do more together. I got your back. I'm standing with you. And no devil in hell is going to stop us. If y'all believe that, give God a praise in here today. Isn't that good? I thought about it. That's good right there, man. The power of we. The power of we. One can put a thousand. Two can put ten thousand. And I just wonder if we come together as one. How many devils in hell today we can chase out of this church? Yeah, the power of we. Everybody say it. The power of of we. Yeah, so if you have your Bible, I want you to turn to Psalms 133. I've got a lot of scripture. Uh, I want to get this in your spirit, and I'm excited. Psalms 133, verse 1 through 3, to the note takers. And listen, if you don't take notes, I highly advise you to. That's the way I got to learn. Take some notes, because this, I promise you, God's word will not come back void. How many of y'all have ever had this moment? I know somebody said that before. I just don't know how they said it, you know? So take some notes. Psalms 133, verse 1 through 3. I love this. Read now the New King James. The Bible says, how many know this is good stuff? Behold, listen, how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. Oh, preach it, preacher. I think I will. It is like precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron. Listen to this. Here's how precious it is. Running down the edge of his garments. I love this. It is like the dew of Hermon. Descending upon the mountains of Zion. And listen to this. God says when you dwell and you unify together as one. Watch what he says. God said this. For there the Lord commanded the blessing. And here's his blessing. Y'all ready? Life forevermore. Life forevermore. Life forevermore forevermore. I love this. So listen to this. John chapter 17, verse 21. I got to go fast. John chapter 17, verse 21, New Living Translation. Here's what God's, Jesus' prayer was. I want y'all to think about how powerful. Jesus is praying this prayer. Jesus is praying it. I pray that they will all be, I pray that they all be just listen, listen to this. Here's what he, how he wants us to be one. Listen to this. Just as you and I are one. Wow. As you and you are in me, Father, I am in you. I may, listen to this, and may they be in us, listen to this, so the world, 
so the world will believe that you sent me. Church, I want you to listen. Listen, it's so good. Lean in, lean in, listen to this. Jesus prayed this prayer five times. In John chapter 17, he prayed this prayer five times. Everybody say five times. Five means grace. He prayed this prayer five times before he went to the cross to be hung. There was one thing on his mind, and I'm going to preach this till heaven comes down today. There was one thing on Jesus Christ's mind before he got hung on the cross. He said, Father, make them one five times. 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 Y'all going to get this before I get out of here today. Make them one. Don't make them 131 churches in South Central. Don't make them Southern Baptist, Independent Baptist, Methodist, Episcopalians. I want me to keep going on. Pentecostal. He said, make them one. Y'all watch this. Help me. I know some of y'all get really, really mad when Rafferty preaches like this. But I promise you, when you get to heaven, God's not going to look at you and say, what church did you attend? He's not going to say, are you a Southern Baptist? All the Southern Baptists over to the left. Independent Baptists in the back. Pentecostal. Hey, hey, hey. y'all over here in the rowdy section. There ain't no, watch this. I'm telling y'all. He said, make my people one. You better get over it. If you're mad, I'm talking to you. He said, listen, listen, listen. God, Elkhorn, if we can get this. If we can get this. Father, make them one. Father, and listen to this, so good. Here's how important this is. Because he said, Jesus said, listen to this. The world will believe we're one if the body of Christ is one. The world out there will believe in us if they're one down here. Y'all, come on. It's so good. That is so powerful. Let me give you one more scripture. I'll, I'll preach a little bit. John 24, verse 15. We say this all the time, but there was a decision that had to be made by Joshua. Joshua preceded Moses. He was a leader. Watch this. Joshua 24, 15. Last part of that verse. But as for me and my family, but as for me and my family, we... We'll serve the Lord. Listen to me. But as for me and my family, we will serve me, my we. That's what I was going to call this sermon, me, my we. <laughs> I like that one too. Y'all, that's a subtitle. Me, me, my we. Me. <laughs> so listen to me very carefully. Church, we definitely live. How many of y'all know this is true? We live in a me and a my generation. Oh, come on. But God says, when it starts to become about we, that's when the commanded blessing will come. God says, I've got a command, y'all listen to me, a commanded blessing. Not just a blessing lingering. He says, when I see the me's and the my's start talking about the we's. When, when, I, when I start seeing the people, hallelujah, become one. He said, I've got a commanded blessing, hallelujah, that's going to fall on their life. Right now, some of you may be missing the biggest blessing of your life because you've got disunity, I'm preaching good, in your life. I don't like them. I didn't ask you, did you like them? I asked you, do you love them? Do you love them? Oh, I hope this goes worldwide. So in other words, when marriage, I'm preaching good, when marriage is not about me and my, it's about we. The two shall become yeah, Dana's got my rib. She's a rib taker. She's a way maker. I feel the Holy Ghost. Y'all look at me if you want to. I don't care. Yeah, when the church is not about me and my. When the church is not about me and my. When marriage is not about me and my. When we become about we. When we become the we church. When we start loving people the way God loved them. When we love the drug addict that's in the ditch and we'll reach down and say, hey, let me pull you out. Not just talk about them in the ditch. Everybody can be a ditch taker. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about, man, the people that don't look like you, act like you, talk like you. Hey, 
I'm talking to somebody today. It ain't about me and my. It's about we. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost up. I don't know what y'all feel, but it's stout up here today. Yeah. When we start caring about other people, hmm, God said, I got a commanded blessing for you. When you start caring about other people, God says, I've got a commanded blessing I'm going to put on you. I feel that. One man said it like this. I like this. It's, his name's Mike Kiger. He, he said it like this. God is not a stumbling block. He's a, he's a building block. God is not a stumbling block. He's a building block. And I'm just telling everybody here today, he's the cornerstone. He's the foundation. He's the brick. He's the block. He's the mortar. He's everything that we got. If you think the government's going to get us out of this situation, you might as well give up right now. But I know somebody that's greater than the Democrats, greater than the Republicans, greater than the Independents. His name, hallelujah, is Jesus. I wish somebody helped me preach it here today. He's, he's a building block. He ain't no little, he, he ain't no stumbling block. He ain't no stumbling block. He's a building block. He's a building block. Church, it's not about me. It's not about my. It's about we. I want everybody to say that. It's not about me. Come on. It's not about me. It's not about my. It's about we. That person sitting beside you is eternity. Watch. That person will either spend eternity forever in heaven or hell. Well, Brian, I don't believe in hell. That may be where you're going. So listen to me. That person, you got to listen to me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We got to stop looking at flesh and start looking at people as spirits. Because that spirit, that spirit is eternal. That spirit is eternal. I had one pastor this morning, he, sp he spoke this, and man, it just got, it's not in my notes, but y'all get this for free. He said, we don't fight against the enemy, we wrestle against the enemy. We don't fight. Some of you are fighting a fight that has already been won. I feel the Holy Ghost. Yeah, you're fighting a fight that has already been won. So back in Roman days, I teach this for a moment. Back in Roman days, they would draw a circle mark in the, in the ground. A big old circle. They said approximately six to nine feet. And then the Christian, I love this, Christina. The Christian would step inside the circle. And whether a giant would come, a spirit would come, uh, whatever, they would step inside the circle. And this, this may be old school preaching, but it's good preaching. And all this says this, you don't fight him, you wrestle him. You wrestle the enemy to get him out of the ground that you're already standing on. I feel the Holy Ghost. So what happens is a lot of you are trying to knock the enemy out. He's already been TKO'd. I'm just telling you when you have done all that you can do, stand, hallelujah, stand in the circle. Stand in there, draw a circle around yourself and say, God may revival start in this circle. Yeah. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. Yeah. So here, unity is a big deal. Unity is a big deal. When you and I tie, that's a big deal. And if the devil can divide us, the devil will conquer us. Y'all, you better lean in. If the devil can divide us, he'll conquer us. Unity is a big thing. My God, if you can get churches on the same page, you've done something. But when it's about me and my, this is the way we've always done it. Me and my family, we're going to do it this way. That's why you got 131 churches. But when you get something in your spirit that says, you know what? It's not about me no more. It's not about me no more. It's about the person sitting beside me. Do you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? The one behind you, do they know Jesus Christ? What if, they're, what if they base their eternity on how you worship? What if they base their eternity on how Christians act? Ooh, I'm preaching good. Let me get back to this. Here's what I'm trying to preach today. When we all come together as one, everybody say one. Father, may they become one. And we unify, we touch and agree, speaking the same language, nothing, 
No thing, nothing, no thing can stop us. Watch this. Hell itself cannot stop when the church becomes one. The devil himself, the Antichrist, the devil, the demons. Hey, I'm just telling y'all, when we become one, 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 everybody say one. Unify. We got to unify. We got to come together. Watch this. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. I'm almost finished. I think. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, New Living Translation. In this manner, now this is, a, this is Jesus, this is Jesus praying. Listen, in this manner, therefore pray. When you pray, watch what he says. Our Father in heaven, how would be your name? Not how would be your name. <laughs> I worked hard on this, y'all. How would how'd be your name? He says these words. Jesus said, when you pray, you pray our Father, not just my Father, watch this, not, not just my Father, not just your, it's our Father. He said, when he sees the church as one praying, God, I, I know Bobby's got you, but I do too. So God, it's not just his Father and my Father, it's our Father who art in heaven. How would be your name? God, what do you want me to do? God, how loud do you want me to say? God, how do you want me to worship today? And how would be your name. See, when we, start, when we stop focusing on me and my and start focusing on we, watch this, the power of the blessing will come. Hallelujah. The, when you stop focusing on me and my and you start focusing on we, we, the body of Christ, he's not just coming for me. Who else is he coming for? Yeah, he's coming for us. So listen, we're in this together. We're in this together, but when we stop focusing on me and my and start focusing on we, the power of the blessing will come, the anointing will flow, the oil will flow, the fire will come, breakthrough will be here. I'm telling you, there's power when God's people come together as one. I'm trying to preach good. So here's, here's the deal. Barner Research, I'm big on research. Barn, and I'm not saying this is a, the 67th book of the Bible. I'm just telling you, there are people out there that has research. They do this stuff for a living. They're pretty daggone close. Watch. Barner Research says this. I want you to listen to this. There's an 80-20 rule statistic in the church today. And you know what? I also believe this statistic. I've been your pastor coming on 13 years. I believe what I'm getting ready to tell you. There's an 80-20 principle. The statistic says that only 20%, 20% of the church participates. Only 20% of the church participates. That means they work in the church, they give back to the church, they truly worship at the church, and 80% of the people, watch this, they just sit back and, and they spectate. They don't participate. 80%. 80%. Y'all help me. 80%. Sit back on their blessed assurance and they don't do anything. They come in like this. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. I didn't get anything out of worship. I got word for you today. Did you give anything to worship? Did you give back to God? Did you worship today? Did you do anything for God today? Or are you just sitting there spectating? I feel the Holy Ghost. Woo! I feel it. 80% sit in the pews and don't do. We need van drivers. We need nursery workers. I'm preaching. Come on, somebody help me in this house. We need, watch, we need each other. We need each other. I just wonder, I just wonder, I start thinking about this. What if we could reverse that? And in Jesus Christ's name, in this section, in Jesus Christ's name in this section, in Jesus Christ's name in this section, and in Jesus Christ's name in this section. I speak this over you. Let's reverse that. Come on, Elkhorn. Come on. I need, listen, if you're not getting this sermon, you're probably 80%. I'm talking to you. Sometimes it takes a head coach getting up. I'm telling you, let's reverse that. What if 80% participate and 20% They just sit there. So here's, let me, let, let, let me go a little bit deeper. What if 
you had eight people on your row worshiping God, full of the Holy Ghost, praising God, giving heaven a shout, and giving hell trouble. What if we had eight out of ten on your row right now, says today I come to give God praise today. It don't matter what's going on in my life. God is greater. God is bigger. And we're going to get through this together. I'm here today to give God praise. I'm not looking at my problem. I got a solution in my life. I'm going to give God praise. And, and I'm telling you what's going to happen. Y'all listen to me, Elkhorn. Here's what's going to happen. If eight people on your row start praising God, those 20%, two things going to happen. They're going to think we're crazy, which we are. And they're going to leave, which they need to. <laughs> or they're going to join in. They're going to join in. I just wonder today, are you one of the eight that's on your roll that's going to give God some praise in here today? Are you a crazy Christian that says, I'm not going to let hell. Why are y'all still sitting there? Come on, tell me. Who's going to worship him today? Somebody give him praise in here today. I'm one of the eight. I'm one of the eight, and I ain't going to let nobody out worship me today. I'm one of the eight. Let's reverse that curse. Elkhorn, y'all lean in and listen to me. If we're going to make a difference in South Central, I love Louisville. I, I, love, I love Lexington. I love Malone's. I'm where they come from. But if we're going to make a difference, watch. Everybody's valuable. Look at that baby right there. Standing there going like that. Yeah. And some of you adults, I'm calling you out today. If y'all don't like preaching like this, man, go get you a vacation Bible school preacher. That baby, hinder not my children to come unto me. With Brian, they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> I beg, you're <laughs> different with you. So listen to me. Let's become an 80-20 church where 80% participate and the 20% joins in. And listen, what we got, we got a touchdown. We got a team. We got, we got players on the field that says, you know what? And listen, I, I get tired. Never mind, I ain't gonna go there. God just corrected me, so I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. Let, let me, let me, I'll leave you with this. Praise team. Greg and Holly, you come. And listen, y'all pray. Y'all pray because we got a lot of people right now that's got active cases. I'm not afraid of this. We, we got a lot of people that's quarantined. It's real. But we're two or three come together touching and agreeing. Guys, we can give hell some problems today. Oh, no, Elkhorn's <laughs> been them, cra them crazy folk. They worshiping again. And it used to be two on the road standing up worshiping God. Now there's eight on the road worshiping God. And the 20%, they're catching on and they're getting a the vision of what's going on. And you know what? Next thing you know, we're going to have a problem to put de extra demons on them. So here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. I'll leave you with this. Genesis, this is where we've been the vain all month. How many of y'all enjoyed the, 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 the rebuild and the rebirth? Everybody good? So I started thinking about this, and this is, the plane's landing. Y'all, it's 11-11. Make a wish. I'm joking. Genesis 11-11. Let, let me read this over you. Listen. And the Lord said, this is the Bible. Indeed, these people are one. And they all have one language. Oh, my. And this is what they begin to do. Watch this. Now, that, that they're one people, they're one language, they got the same vision. He says, nothing that they propose to do will be, held, will be withheld from them. Can, can, I be, can, I, can I go deep with y'all this morning? Just really, just that deep. These were pagan, watch, lost people that were one. Listen to me. These were pagan, lost people that were one. And can I go really deep with y'all? They were worshiping devils. I don't, I never read that in the Bible. Well, if you get your Bible off the shelf once a year, you're not going to know. They were worshiping demons and devils. But joy, God seen something up in heaven. Why can't my people? You mean to tell me lost, pagan, undone, devil worshiping people straight from the pits of hell are one? 
God said, I can't have that. That ain't what I died for. God, let them be one. Well, no wonder Jesus' prayer, when he, before he died on the cross, he said, Father, let them become one. No wonder Jesus said, God, Father, five times, let them become one. Let them become one because he's seen it back in the OT. He literally left heaven. He stood up, left heaven, left a beautiful place, came down to earth. And he said, I'm going to have to confuse the languages. Now, we got 6,809 languages. That's where it come from. Well, Brian, we just really got some smart people. No, 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 no. That's why when God stood up, he looked down at their tower. He said, I know y'all think y'all big and bad down there. I know y'all think y'all are smart. But when he stood up, he looked down on what man could do with their hands. Man was looking up. Woo! Well, we got 925 seats. We're the biggest church in South Central. Oh, really? What about that person sitting beside you? They don't know me. It ain't about the seats. It's about the Savior. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm so ready to shake the churches through Jesus Christ. We have been still for too long. We have been still for too long. You know they say, this is from the, this is from the Kentucky Baptist. They said that you can go from town and drive out to Elkhorn on Highway 70. And before you get to Elkhorn, this is what the statistics say. Eight out of ten houses. There we go with that number again. Don't go to church. And we pass them, and we pass them, and we pass them. I'm getting my praise on today. But if you keep passing the sheep, it's a me and a my. It's a me and a my. It's a me and a my. I pray that God puts a burr under your saddle today. And nobody dies and goes to hell from South Central. Nobody dies and goes to hell from Taylor County, Campbellsville, Green County, Marion County. Washington, help me, Holy Ghost. Brian, you're passionate. Yeah, you know why? Because a lot of people are building towers. And God says, I'm worried about the temple. I'm worried about the temple. I'm concerned about the temple. So, here's what I've, I made my mind up. And I want y'all to pray for me. But I mean what I'm getting ready to tell you. My life's changing. I am not the same pastor that I was when y'all hired me in 2008. Thank God. I'm growing. I'm learning. I'm getting close to Jesus Christ. Now, how many of you know my granny was right? Ever who you hang out with is probably what you're going to start coming like. Listen, I'm here today to give hell some hell. Disunity. Y'all watch me. I don't care what denomination you are. Notice in the, in the Old Testament, Greg, they didn't go back there and say, um, I go to First Baptist of Jerusalem. They were worshiping the devil. Y'all watch me. They were worshiping demons. You say, Brian, do you really believe? Oh, yeah, watch this. Y'all read I'm going to really mess y'all up. There's people still today worship devils and demons. God just spoke this to me. You know what will mess the devil up? When the church becomes one. When we start speaking the same language. <laughs> yeah. When we unify. Hey, watch this. I don't care what you what color you like. I don't care what kind of education you got. Oh, I'm preaching good. I preach it. I think I will. My concern is that everybody here today knows Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That you're not building a tower you're investing in the temple. You're investing in the temple. You're investing in the temple. So here's what God gave me. We're done. The Lord spoke this to me and I wrote it down. And here's just what he said. To, and it may be just for me. I don't think so. But the power. Hallelujah. Still feel it. The power and the key to success for Elkhorn. Is we must become one. Unified together, speak in the same language and become a we church.
And I prophesy this over everybody's life. If, if we do this, if we do this, watch, anything, anything we put our minds to do, it is possible with Jesus Christ. Somebody give him praise in here today. Anything we put our minds to do, it is possible with Jesus Christ. All things are possible with Jesus Christ. So it's time to rebirth, rebuild, refocus, and become the we church. Y'all ready? Look at me. Father, <laughs> may you make all of us one. May you make our marriages one. That's why God says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, do not be unequally yoked. Do not be unequally yoked. Because watch. First of all, God didn't put that together. But second of all, you're already building off of a foundation that's just, it's not right. But here's what I'm learning. Why I've always asked this. Why do the lost people, how come it seems like their marriage is working? Courtney, you know what God told me? Because they're speaking one. That, that should help somebody here today. Why does it seem like the lost people, why does it seem like the, I'm not going to say what I wanted to say right there about the government. Why does it seem like our government on one side is winning? Are y'all ready for some preaching? Because they're speaking one. When the, when the Christians start speaking one language. When we unify and we love each other no matter where we're at, no matter what the situation is. Listen, the churches have used the cross as a whipping post. I declare today that cross delivers people. That cross will save your life. That cross will get you into heaven. That cross went from hell to heaven and go over it in Jesus' name. We got to quit whipping people. And start saying, you know what? I know you're not like me. But here, I want to help you. Not become like me. But become like him. I leave. I'm done. That's the third time. Y'all know this is real now. So Jesus said, Father, make them one. 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 Five times. And he said something really crazy, Lauren. He said these words. He said... When they become one, the world will know that you sent me. You know why the world don't want nothing to do with the church? We are the most disunified, messed up people in the whole wide world. They, they look at the church, they go, why would I want to join that church? When they're messed up, they're fussing, they're fighting, they're kicking people, they're whipping people, they hate each other. You gotta... But they look at lost people who's rich and they're together. They look at lost marriages. They're making it. They're looking at lost people be millionaires and they're sitting there going, man, they don't even worship God. How, how are they like this? You know why? Because the lost people have figured something out that the saved people haven't. The lost people know if they become one. I'm hallelujah. They know. No matter who stands against us, if we become one, nobody can stop us. I declare today under the unction of the Holy Ghost. Elkhorn Baptist Church, become one. Let's unify. Let's start speaking the same language. Get in there. Score a touchdown for Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. We got to be we. We is about we. It's not about me. It's not about my. It's about we. It's about we. We. God, make us a we church. Woo. So listen. Just remain standing. Rest of you stand up. Now do y'all understand? Hopefully. Jimmy, I used to ask the same question. Why does lost people seem so happy? Why 
Does it seem like people who are living wrong, out of God's will, they're messed up, but they seem happy? You know why? I told y'all, because they're speaking the same language. They understand each other. And we as Christians, <laughs> we try to prove each other wrong. I'm right, you're wrong. Me, my four, no more. This is my church. I'm going to do what I want to do. Now, how's that working out for you? So, in Jesus Christ's name, it's 1123. I love y'all with all my heart. I do. I love being your pastor. Watch this. You know what's going to make Elkhorn Baptist Church shine? Is when this world sees a messed up, dysfunctional church speaking the same language. Husbands, wives, watch me. You ready? You ain't going to change your wife. Wives, watch this. You ain't going to change your husbands. But you know what's going to make y'all one? When y'all start speaking the same language. Same language. So, Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, I've done what you told me to do. Bless your people. Touch your people. Give them an ear, dear God. Lord, I pray for those who are struggling right now. They, they feel like they have no purpose. But, Lord, I pray right now, God, for unity. Hallelujah. Over this house. Unity over this house. May we become a we church. Amen. May we become a we church. May we unify. May we start speaking the same language. And may we not build a tower. Watch this. Y'all ready? May we not build Elkhorn Baptist Church. May we plunder hell and populate heaven. May we build the kingdom. Y'all come on. May we build the kingdom. So in Jesus' name, this altar's open. I pray that God spoke to everybody. Everybody get a word? Everybody get it? If not, I can go round two. I, I, I love it. I can do it. I can chew it and digest it and vomit it up and do it over again. So in Jesus' name, y'all ready? This altar's open. Maybe you're in this church today, and man, you just ain't seeing eye to eye with people. I'm talking to you, sir. Ma'am, I'm talking to you. I just feel in my heart. Until we unify, what you see is what you get. Donna, Holly, we're always going to have the 80-20 principle until we unify and start speaking the same language. So in Jesus Christ's name, I'm done. Father God, have your way. Speak to your people. In Jesus' name. And all God's people say it.